Some people take their sexual desires to a whole other level, and in this case, we'll learn about a couple's deranged love of kidnapping, sexual abuse, and torture. This is David Parker Ray, the toy box killer. You need to get your shit together and listen to this tape. It is very relevant to your situation. Born November 6, 1939, in Bellin, New Mexico, United States, Ray and his sister Peggy lived with their grandfather and were occasionally visited by their violent, alcoholic father, who would supply Ray with sadomasochistic pornography. He attended Montanay High School in Montanay, New Mexico, and was frequently bullied for his shyness around girls. Sexual fantasies of unconsensual acts, torturing, and murdering women would develop during his teenage years, and it was around this time that his sister discovered some of his sadomasochistic drawings and pornography. After high school, Ray was honorably discharged from the U.S. Army where he served as a mechanic and later in life would become divorced four times and had two children, one of which being accomplice to his future crimes, Glenda Jean Ray, also known as Jesse Ray. Ray sexually tortured and presumably killed his victims using whips, chains, pulleys, straps, clamps, leg spreading bars, surgical blades, electric shock machines, and saws. And judging by the transcripts of some of his tapes, some really, really large toys. He terrorized many women with these tools for many years while in New Mexico. With the help of his accomplices, some of whom are alleged to have been several of the women he was dating. Inside his heavily fortified truck, the toy box, he had numerous toys, torture implements, syringes which he used to drug his victims, detailed diagrams showing various ways of inflicting pain, and a generator. A mirror was mounted to the ceiling above the gynecology chair where he strapped his victims to, and he'd oftentimes trap them down to allow his friends and dogs to sexually abuse them as well. I can't believe I just read that. Yeah, imagine actually reading the transcripts of the tapes. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> he has been said to have wanted his victims to see everything he was doing to them, and had an audio tape which played for his victims whenever they'd regain consciousness upon the arrival to the toy box. Hello there, bitch. Are you comfortable right now? I doubt it. Wrists and ankles chained, gagged, probably blindfolded. You are disoriented and scared too, I would imagine. Perfectly normal under the circumstances. For a little while at least, you need to get your shit together and listen to this tape. It is very relevant to your situation. Getting into what ultimately brought down Ray, let's talk about the video the police found during the investigation dated from 1996. Kelly Garrett, also known as Kelly Van Cleff, was one of Ray's few known victims and the only one he seemed to have on video. Garrett, thankfully, is still alive. This was confirmed when the police identified a tattoo on her ankle in Colorado. She later testified that she'd gotten into a fight with her husband and decided to spend the night playing pool with friends. But on July 24th, 1996, Ray's daughter Glenda, also known as Jessie, who personally knew Garrett, took her to Blue Water Saloon in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and drugged her alcohol. This resulted in her stumbling out into the parking lot, where she suffered a blow from behind that knocked her unconscious. Ray took her to his trailer and attached a dog collar and a leash to her neck. She awoke, but blacked out several times during the two days of torture and drugging. During this time, Ray noticed she was breathing, slashed her throat, and believing her to be dead, dumped her beside a road near Caballo. He was later treated for her injuries at a local clinic. Neither her husband nor the police believed her story, and her husband thought she was cheating on him with the night she was attacked. After the divorce, Garrett moved to Colorado, and I can't help but wonder how stupid her husband must have felt after her story was verified. Though Ray and his toy box seemed impossible to defeat, he, like most criminals, make one a fatal mistake. On May 19th, 1999, Ray posed an undercover police officer and approached a woman named Cynthia Vigil in a parking lot. He told her she was under arrest for soliciting prostitution and handcuffed her. He then put her in his trailer and took her back to Elephant Butte, where her kidnapping would last only three days of a possible two to three months. On the 22nd of March, Ray left for work, leaving some of Cynthia's chains unlocked. Ray's accomplice, Cindy Hendy, had also left the keys on a nearby table before going into another room for a phone call. After Vigil got the keys, Hendy took notice and attempted to fight her. In the attack, Hendy broke a lamp over Vigil's head, but that didn't stop her from unlocking the rest of her chains and stabbing Hendy in the neck with an ice pick. Hendy fell on the floor and Vigil escaped. She fled while wearing only an iron slave collar and padded lock chains. She ran down the road to a nearby home where the owner comforted her and called the police. Her escape led officials to the trailer and instigated a capture of Ray and his accomplices. Ray was taken to jail, and after the publicity surrounding the arrest, another victim, Angelica Montano, came forward. To 
other accomplices were uncovered by the investigation, Ray's daughter Glenda and Denny Yancey. He was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to two 15-year prison terms. Ray also allegedly admitted to having an accomplice named Billy Bowers, a previous business partner whom Ray also murdered. Damn, okay. How many people is that has he killed? He's suspected of killing like 60. Jesus, okay. Also, to prevent women from reporting their crimes after setting them loose, Ray drugged them and attempted using hypnosis to make them forget everything. One woman, however, remained uncertain that her memories of abuse were anything but nightmares until she was contacted by the FBI. A decision was made to try these cases involving Ray's attacks in true trials. One of his acts against Cynthia Vigil, one of those against Angelica Monto, and one of these against Kelly Garrett. Trial 1 resulted in a mistrial and retrial, with a conviction in the retrial. Montano died before Trial 2, and there was no conviction. At one point, presumably during Trial 3, Ray agreed to a plea deal, in which he was sentenced in 2001 to 224 years in prison. Ray's daughter, Glenda, was also tried on charges of kidnapping and was sentenced to two and a half years in prison with additional five-year probation. Yancey is still in the process of serving time, and in 2000, Cindy Hendy testified against Ray and received a 36-year sentence. She, unfortunately, has been released from prison since July 15th of 2019, but at least she'll always have that ice pick scar to remember of her failures. On May 28, 2002, Ray was taken to Leah County Correctional Facility in Hobbs, New Mexico, but died of a heart attack before the planned interrogation took place. Guess that goes to show just how scared that little old man was of what would happen to him in prison. I guess if there was one thing to take away from this, is be cautious around strangers. Ray did this stuff very often, and according to himself in his audio tapes, he'd almost never come home empty-handed from his hunting trip, and women were very easy to capture. Hope someone reunites Ray and Hindi. As in, she gets killed, but I can't say that. If you've made it this far into the video, please consider joining the membership on the channel or supporting us on Patreon, because we're pretty sure these videos might get monetized. And also follow us on social media. I don't really use mine, but I want to. I just don't have a reason to. <laughs> if we hit 1 million subscribers, I'll start at OnlyFans. No, we're not doing that. How many times did I have to stomp on you for you to not mention that? I have brought up the idea many times and each time she shoots it down. <laughs> it's like, no, we're not doing this. But yeah, like she said, make sure to check all that stuff out. And if you want to support us and also rep our stuff, uh, we also have merch if you want to check that out. Goodbye. Catch you next time. And believing her to be dead, dumped her beside a toad. Is a fat ass toad.